All right, guys, we got a little titration going. We got 100 mils of 0.1 molar ammonia, and we're adding 0.1 molar nitric acid. We're adding 150 mils of that nitric acid, and we want the pH of the resulting solution. Okay, when I'm asked to do a titration problem, here's what I do. Number one, balanced chemical equation. I am mixing ammonia with HNO3. What happens when I mix those two? Acid plus base. Well, the base steals the proton away and leaves back the conjugate base of the acid. Cool. Now, step two. I like to figure out how many moles of each reactant I have. That's easy in this case because I'm given concentration and volume. The number of moles of NH3 is the concentration, 0.1 times the volume, 0.1 liters. Turns out I have 0 0.01 moles of ammonia. In this case, for nitric acid, 0.1 moles per liter, 0.15 liters, see? So it turns out I have 0 0.015 moles of nitric acid. Now, I should have mentioned I made sure this was a balanced chemical equation. If it's not balanced, you're done. Balance it. In this case, it's a one-to-one -one reaction. So if I use up one of these, I use up one of these. If I use up 12 of these, I use up 12 of these. If I use up 0 0.01 of these, I use up 0 0.01 of these. And that's exactly what happens when this reaction goes to completion. I'm losing 0 0.01 ammonias, and I'm left with zero. I'm losing 0 0.01 nitric acid molecule, or moles of nitric acid and I'm left with leftover acid. Oh, that could play a role in the pH. And not only did I lose some moles on this side, I actually gained some moles on the other, because those molecules had to go somewhere. And so in my final mixture, once I've, once I've mixed these two, I can consider it to be a solution containing 0 0.005 moles of HNO3, 0.01 moles of NH4 plus and 0.01 moles of NO3 minus. Be careful, these are moles. If you want the concentration, which is what plays a role in pH and equilibrium, you're going to have to divide each of these numbers of moles by the total volume. The total volume is 250 milliliters. So I'm going to do that for all these just so I don't forget. All right, where are we here? 0 0.005 moles divided by point, oh, nuts. 0 0.005 moles divided by 0.25 liters gives me 0 0.02 moles per liter of nitric acid. 0 0.04 moles per liter of NH4 plus and 0 0.04 moles per liter of nitrate ions. So I just need to figure out the pH of this solution as a whole. I'm going to tell you my shortcut, but I'm going to prove it to you later. The Ka of this is really, really small. You know that because the Ka can be calculated from the Kb. 10 to the power of negative 14 divided by the Kb is what gives you your Ka. It turns out to be 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 10, which is really, really, really small. There's no way this amount of ammonium is going to dissociate appreciably and play more of a role than this amount of strong acid left over. So your quick and dirty way to get the pH of this resulting solution is that the pH is negative log of your acid concentration, which in this case is 0 0.02. And the negative log of 0 0.02 is 1.70. There is your pH right there. Beautiful. But I'm going to explain to you why we're even allowed to make that assumption about the NH4. Check it out. We're going to do an actual equilibrium. 
If you have NH4 left over in your titration goo mixture, what that NH4 could conceivably do is redissociate back to give you H plus and your NH3. After all, you have no NH3 left. So if there's going to be any equilibration between the two, you're definitely going to go from NH4, which you do have some left of, in the direction of the NH3. And this is the equilibrium for that. Now, this, the way that I've written it, deserves a K, but because it's the acid dissociating, we need a Ka. That's Kw divided by Kb, which was given in the question. And we already calculated it, but I got rid of it like a fool. 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 gives me a Ka of 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10. All right, ice table time. Oh, man, I have a habit of writing where you guys can't see it. Initial concentration of NH4 plus, 0 0.04. Initial concentration of acid, oh, huh, 0 0.02. Initial concentration of NH3, zero. What's gonna happen? Well, we're going to lose some of this, gain some of that, and gain some of that, so that our equilibrium concentrations are 0 0.04 minus x, 0 0.02 plus x, and x itself. So the k turns out to be 0 0.02 minus x times x all over 0 0.04 minus x. Beautiful. Now, what do we have here? We've got the fact that k is 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10. That's horrendously small. And that means x will be very small, especially relative to real numbers like 0.02 and 0.04. So we can assume that these x's perturbing the 0 0.02 and 0 0.04 are insignificant. And that simplifies our equation. Now it just turns out that x is equal to our Ka times 0 0.04, see we have to undo division, and divided by 0 0.02, oh I still have the K on my calculator, lucky me, times 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.02, I get a K of this, whatever that means, or sorry, that I get an X of this, that's a horrendously small number. My concentration of H plus at equilibrium is 0 0.02 plus that. So I have to add 0 0.02. And that's the concentration of H plus. Notice, that's pretty close to the concentration of H plus when we assumed it was just from this strong acid source. It turns out this NH4 did not dissociate appreciably. And it, <clears throat> it changed the concentration of H plus by uh, like the 10th decimal place or something. Let's take the negative log of this because we need the pH. Oh look, it's the exact same number. The pH turns out to be 1.70. Look, your Ka was small in this case. Really small. Well, I guess I didn't write it down. Here we go. Ka was really small. You can tell because Kb was pretty large. So when you have leftover strong acid and you're comparing it to leftover conjugate acid, that has to re-dissociate, and Ka is really small, that doesn't even matter. You might as well ignore it. Skip to the fact that the strong acid is your, uh, your deal maker here. Take the negative log of that concentration, and you're good to go. Hey, best of luck to you.